Yo, what it do guys? I hope you're all doing well and welcome to a follow-up video for Eidolon hunting. On the previous video we covered how to get ready and what to expect before fighting the Eidolons. Well, this video we're going to cover and show the breakdown of the fight and how to capture these planes of Eidolon Senyans. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'll be posting the timestamps in the description below if you guys wish to fast track to a certain explanation you need. And on that note, let's just begin. So, we're leaving Cedars at nighttime, and we're now entering the plains. The most important thing to know, understand, and protect throughout the fight is your laws. There are several laws located around the map, and you will tend to find more of them at the Grenier camps normally in ones and twos. Here I have marked out the map for some laws I may go to. There are some other locations to visit and pick up laws, however, I find them a bit too spread out and time consuming. The numbers marked in white are more of my commonly visited areas, however I've marked some other numbers in black so you can choose your own pattern to pick up. When arrived to any location, you want to solely focus on the lore only. If you have any arch wings to spare, you can make this a quick get in get out job, so try to ignore the grenade. Shoot the lore until low health to enter a disabled state, now start hacking, and when successful, the lore will begin to follow you around. You can manually toggle hold and follow as commands, so if you notice the lore is idling, then command it to follow you once again. When the lore has been hacked, you'll notice an icon of yellow colour above. This means the lore currently has no charges stored within and does not relatively have any use. What you want to do is use this lore to capture the energy form of a Vonvalist. You will need three energy form Vonvalis or three energy spheres dropped from energy form Vonvalis to charge the lore. When fully charged, your lore will now contain and capture Synovias and the Eidolons. Do try to remember guys that any one charge law can stop an Eidolon from teleporting away when a limb is broken, but one law can only tether to just two of the broken limbs, so in order to capture Eidolons you want to make sure all of their limbs are tethered by laws. Now let's look into the Vonvalis and how to use them to our advantage. Vonvalis have two forms. The first form you can deal damage to them with either weapons or amps. This is their physical form. During physical form, Vonvalis will shoot semi-guided projectiles. Try not to leave too many of them alive, as the damage they do will add up. It's best to assign one person in the squad to lower their numbers. Once they have received enough damage, they will enter their second ghostly form called energy form. Consider it like a second life. During energy form, the only way that they can be killed is by void damage, so use your amp to finish them off. When the Vonvalis is in the energy form state, a law will collect them as a charge if it is placed close enough. However, if you kill a Vonvalis in their energy form and there are no laws nearby, then they will drop an energy sphere. These are little blue orbs placed on the ground. Simply pick them up and your Tano or your Warframe will pulse with a blue glow. This is a charge. So all you have to do is stand next to the law and after one second it will be absorbed off of you and charged into the closest law to you that can consume another charge. Vonvalis will always roam around in packs of two on the planes, and Eidolons will also summon them in their final stage, so there will be plenty of them around, sometimes it just takes a little patience to find them. Now let's cover the Eidolons. There are three types of them, the Terralist, the Gontulist, and the Hydralist. Each Eidolon is covered with a shield, alloy armor, and robotic health. And the only way to damage and remove that shield is by using void damage from your operator's amp. As for the alloy armor, radiation is considered the best element to use when shooting their synovias with your weapons. And a synovia is a weak point located on the Eidolons. When their shield is down, you can shoot these parts to break them. Looking more into the Terranist, the first Eidolon you will meet roaming the plains. Firstly, you want to have your laws, and for this particular Eidolon, you only need two charge laws. Work on shooting down the shield. This may take some time if you're not using a more advanced amp setup. The shield's color is a purple overlay on top of the Eidolon's armor, which is a yellow bar. You will see that slowly when you're removing the purple bar. So keep shooting until that shield is completely down. Always remember that during the Eidolon fight, if there are any Vonvalis nearby the Eidolon, they will attempt to link themselves to bring a small part of his shield back up. Try to make sure there isn't too many around or else you will have to spend even more time retaking down his shields once again before you can continue. 
you will encounter several attack moves from the Eidolons. In my opinion, you need not worry about a lot of them. You can counter nearly all of them by using your operator and crouching to enter void mode. This, this way you won't receive any damage. You just need the timing and a little experience to know when to switch. All Eidolons will do a stomp attack. This will cause a ground shockwave. What you want to do is try to time a jump over the shockwave to avoid being knocked further away from them. It's just like the shockwave mowers when you're fighting the corpses. This Eidolon has four Synovias, two located on either of the arms, each opposing sides and roughly around the bicep area. There are other two located on the knees, again opposing sides and right on the kneecaps of the Eidolon. Continue to shoot these Synovias until they break, and when they do, the Eidolon will stumble to the ground and almost yell out in pain as if, causing magnetic damage and magnetic procs to your Warframes and Operators. Again, you can avoid this damage by simply switching to your Operator and entering Void Mode, however, you won't avoid the magnetic proc, which drains your Warframes energy. So either run away from the Eidolon when you've broken his Synovia, or this is where Harrow's 4 or Oberon's 2 can come in to protect your energy capacity from being drained. There is no typical pattern you have to break the Synovias in, so shoot what you can to save time. Remember, here is where your laws will come into play. If they are charged, then they will contain the Eidolon. However, if they are not charged, then after the Eidolon has let out his 5 waves of magnetic damage, he will then teleport away to either the same pond or lake he spawned in, or a much further one. Now that a limb has been broken, you will repeat the process of taking down the shields, then breaking the next Synovi available. Also, if you look on the floor, you will notice teal blood that will temporarily remain dealing DOT damage to anyone standing on it, so just try to avoid that. And finally, once all of the limbs have been broken, the Eidolon will now start to call for aid by summoning Vonvalis to help him regenerate his shields. After half a minute or so, he will stand up again and now you're able to shoot him anywhere to deal finishing damage needed to take him down and capture him. I recommend right at the top of the Eidolon. There is no bonus head multiplier damage, but this spot is easier to hear. So with your two charged lords tethered to him the entire fight, you will now capture the Eidolon instead of just killing him. And if you watch the laws, they will then be destroyed leaving behind loot for you to pick up. An Eidolon shard is used as a crafting recipe, and a brilliant Eidolon shard is something that you can use in three different ways. You can either use it to unbind within the focus tree, you can use it for 25,000 focus standing, or you can use it for summoning the next Eidolon at the Eidolon shrine. You can find the Eidolon Shrine right here in the middle of Gara Lake. Put your Brilliant or Radiant Eidolon Shards in here to continue summoning the next Eidolon in line. So in this case we use our Brilliant Shards that we just got from the Terrorless Capture and now we summon the Gantulist. So, the Gantulist. Take everything you have done from the Terrorist and apply all of those mechanics to the Gantulist. But there are a few differences. He has more shields, more alloy armor, and more robotic health. So keep in mind he will take more of an effort to take him down. His attacks are more advanced, so please pay attention. After a summoning screen, or a regenerating screen, the Gantulist will deploy a dome-based shield. Simply put, stay within the shield if you wish to do damage to him and avoid being outside the shield to take damage from this shield's saps. His stomp is more improved, and it works in two different ways. Let's cover the first way. If the Eidolon shields are up and active, then when he stomps it will be followed with four additional shockwaves. It's like skipping over a rope, so try to time them as well as you can, and if not, then just be forced to be launched further away from him. The second way, if the Eidolon shields are down and inactive, then when he stomps it'll be followed by several pillars of light. These are like massive beams that start from the ground and they go all the way up to the sky. These beams do not move, so you will need to reposition and keep your eye on your Lord's health. They take an extreme amount of damage per second while standing in these pillars. As for the rest of his attacks, use your void mode to go ahead and dodge. The Gauntalist has 6 Synovias, so unlike the Terrorist, he has an additional 2 on the back of his shoulder blades, so there will be more to go ahead and shoot. That being said, you will now need 3 laws to capture this Eidolon, as there are now 6 limbs to be attached to. Do so successfully, and you will be rewarded with more loot. 
you will be reimbursed your brilliant Eidolon shards that you use to summon at the shrine for this successful capture, and you will also earn one Radiant Shard. A Radiant Shard can be used to summon up to 40,000 Focus Standing, or it can also be used at the Shrine of Eidolons to summon the next Eidolon in line, the Hydrist. Definitely more fearsome of the three. So like the Terrorist, take all of the same concept, but now let's look into a few more differences this one offers. Again, more shields, more alloy armor, and definitely more robotic health. As for his attacks, he's the only one to have a DOT passive called Lightning. Throughout the entire fight, you will be struck with lightning strikes, and without the way bounds of Vazarin or Unairu, or even the arcanes of Magus Vigor or Husk, your operator will always get one shot when hit. These do a high amount of damage, so try to take the time by entering void mode or by repositioning the way to avoid the damage. For the most part, you will get hit by a lot of these, so don't worry, because this is definitely the most frustrating part of the fight. During the fight, the Hydralis will spawn Vonvalis Blooms. To put in a nutshell, this is basically a portal to summon Vonvalis. And not only does it summon them, but it also links onto any Vonvalis summoned, giving them immunity to any damage. You will want to take out these Blooms first, then the Vonvalis, and then the Eidolon Shields. This way it gives you more time to get a well-timed shot in without any interruptions or shield regenerations. The Hydralis Stomp, can erupt geysers of acid water, which create bubbles of green energy above them. You can shoot at these with your amp if you have the time to do so. If not and left unchecked, then these bubbles will cause a widespread of radioactive damage on the floor that slowly creeps around the Eidolon. Avoid standing in this area as the damage over time is quite significant and you will find yourself dying very fast if gone unnoticed of your surroundings. Just like the other Eidolons, he does a ground smash. However, the Hydralis will end up spawning green bubbles in the air that grow in size. Just like the previous bubbles we spoke about, you can damage them with your amp to avoid a large amount of magnetic damage and guaranteed magnetic prop. My advice to you on both of these previous attacks with the bubbles is to solely focus on shooting the Eidolon. The more time that you spend shooting the other things that damage you, means the less time that you are spending on the Eidolon taking them down, which means the more time you are spending within this fight, which gives them more time to go ahead and summon more. So ideally, even with the Blooms, I would just try to focus on shooting the Eidolon as much as you possibly can, as quick as you can. The Hydralist also has six Zenobias. All six are in the same location as the Gontu list. So that's two on the arms, two on the knees, and again, two more on the back of the shoulder blades. However, whenever you break a limb of the Hydralist, he may spawn clouds of acid rain that covers a large area. Again, avoid standing within that area and you should just be fine. You will also need three laws to capture this idol for the six limbs it has. A successful capture will reimburse you the Radiant Shard you use at the Shrine and also additional Brilliant Shards and Radiant Shards. You will also earn two Ribbon Transmuters. Some islands have the chance to drop Articulars of themselves. These are just like miniature figurines used for ship decorations, and collecting all three looks very nice within your orbiter. Now that you have successfully killed and captured all three of the islands, you have done what the community will call a one free, one times free. One successful capturing of the Tridolons. This means you can leave the planes and go back to Cetus for your arcane rewards, but <laughs> the fun does not have to stop there. If you have more time remaining on the planes for nighttime, then simply go back in with your team and start the process again. A typical night should yield results of at least 1x3 or 2x3. A good squad will cover a 3x3, and an experienced squad will push for a 4x3. However, the very top veterans have been known to do 5x3 a night. Rightio then, thank you guys so much for watching my Eidolon Guide Part 2, the killing and capturing of the Eidolons. I do feel like I've included everything that needed to be said within this video, however, I haven't covered all of the parts that the Eidolons can do, so there are a few alternative attacks to go ahead and look out for, but like I said, nothing here is major, you can just dodge them using your void mode, so you should just be fine, okay? If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you guys learned anything new or even enjoyed this video, I can only but remind you of a quick way to support by pressing that thumbs up button. 
hit that subscribe button to be notified for any future videos. And as always, thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm out of here. Peace. <laughs>